Uh, Royal has been around for more than six years. Well, we were funded in 2012. Okay. And at the beginning, you know, the focus is really on developing flexible electronic technologies, including uh, sensor technology as well as display. So for the last couple years, we've seen versatile phones, we've seen foldable phones that actually fold in half, but this is the first year where we've seen a phone that's truly flexible and foldable in one piece. So it doesn't just fold in half, it folds as one big screen. And this is where it puts the brand Royal on the map. I've got Dr. Z Yuan here with me. He is the R&D director at Royal, and today we're talking about the Flex Pi. Tell us a little bit about this phone that's hanging up right here. Yes. So it's the very first commercially available smartphone that actually adopts a flexible display. So it's one piece of display that you get a, this continuation of you know, whatever content is showing on the screen. When you bend it and in different form factors shows different aspect ratio. And we also work on the software you know, to enable a lot of fun you know, functionality with the flexible display and multitasking and you know, there's fun things that you can do with camera, for instance. Um, and I, I think, you know, at the end of the day, this is what you know, uh, the market is heading for. Uh, essentially, if you look at nowadays, people are trying to increase the screen to body ratio. Uh, that is essentially, you know, for people to get a larger screen while keeping the same level of portability. Right. And eventually, uh, when 5G comes in, for instance, then you, know, you want a bigger and bigger screen, and being foldable uh, for the display is the only way to really you know, push that limit further. Now, um, please correct me if I'm wrong, but we have seen a foldable display as a concept phone before from other manufacturers, but this is the first time, like you said, it's a commercially available flex screen. So what was this R&D process like to get this screen so flexible? Yes. So on the screen, uh, the R&D have been there for many years, actually. Um, um, so we have to, it takes innovations down to fundamental material, uh, device circuits, and um, a lot, we have to redesign essentially every single layer of what's involved in the display to make this happen. And to make it not only happen once, you know, for demonstration, but also, you know, passing a consumer level reliability test, which is also very critical. And, um, you know, right now, and at the, at the very beginning, you know, when, for instance, like the driving system, the touch material is not as mature as of today. Uh, we have to take a lot of technical challenges, a lot of maybe you know some sacrifice over certain specs. But as it is now, you know we feel the technology is finally ready and for consumer. It doesn't have to sacrifice anything. It's have the same level of resolution as a over 2K display and the same level of brightness um, and other types of performance that you will expect from an uh, AMOLED display. And not, not just one display, it's an AMOLED display, um, like the flagship level of performance that you expect from other smartphones. And meanwhile, you know, still maintain the flexibility and being flexible. What about some of the compromises that are made along the way to create this phone? Um, uh, a lot of things, um, I mean, you have to balance, for instance, uh, the software. Uh, right now we're building on top of Android and we have to essentially customize a lot of user experience. And as you see today, the, the phone, the overall user experience is pretty smooth. And I would say it's only a beginning uh, because not only us, we're also collaborating with developers. We have a developer program that uh, takes uh, our partners in the app space uh, to work together with us, having an actual hardware that they can do hardcore you know, software development, app development on top of this foldable platform. So a lot of these things I will keep involving as you know, the device concept is, is entering the market and uh, you know, getting accepted by the market and getting the feedback from the market. Everything will basically iterate from there. Well, I think that's important to note is that I think a lot of companies are very quick to launch a concept and that's hardware only, but you guys probably could have launched earlier if you didn't work on your software 
as much, but now you've come out with a product that's actually usable and that is actually marketable, and that's that's very impressive. What about the price point of this? Uh, price point is um, is on sale. We actually deliver the first batch of the device already. Okay. Uh, end of last year uh, in December and it will start to rolling out more and more in, in this year and, um, and in China uh, it's selling for about a thousand and three hundred US dollars okay and so on par with an iPhone on par with the iPhone correct and uh, in the US we're also selling a developer version of uh, I think a similar price range so only developer version here in the U.S. market. When will it be available for consumers? Uh, probably later half of the year because, as you know, there are FCC certification right. and we have to work with a carrier. The U.S. market is very carrier-centric, yes. uh, so we have to partner with a carrier if we want to do this. So a lot of uh, business development have to happen. Yeah. Now, you know, when you, if you are here at CES, when you walk into South Hall, Royal is probably one of the first brands you see. It's a very prominent brand, but probably not a, not much of a brand recognition there. So can you tell us a little bit more about the company? Uh, Royal has been around for more than six years. Well, we were funded in 2012. Okay. And at the beginning, you know, the focus is really on developing flexible electronic technologies, including uh, sensor technology as well as display. And it takes years of development and we have uh, we have owned a um, very you know uh, diverse portfolio around that area technology wise huh. and uh, not only that you know soon we realize you know to really make that technology available to market uh, we have to speed the process up if we really want to be the leader in this field so uh, we actually work on product as well um, so that's why you see, you know, for instance, these lights and FlexPi, why it can happen in such a short time is because you know, we try to integrate the whole line. Not only we have the fundamental R&D, we manufacture the display ourselves, we have our own fab in Shenzhen, and we work on product, design the product, and study uh, also um, you know, a lot of technical barriers of how to put these flexible display in the product form factor. So. Um, Everything of these happened in the past uh, more than six years, and we're just very glad. You know, uh, now we're proud to show so so many. Not only just concept, it's really product ready. You know, uh, devices that yeah. that's available to market. And it was found founded by three Stanford PhD students. Yes, correct. <laughs> uh, Stanford alumni uh, having the combining that spirit of you know Bay Area. We're not doing anything conventional, as, as you can tell. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything we're showing on floor, nothing is ov already available on market, right? right? We never do anything traditional. So taking that kind of spirit and in combination of you know, the resource, the type of resource that we can get on hardware um, and on manufacturing, um, so uh, that unique combination, I think, is what really enabled us to go so far. And I heard that you've been involved with the company pretty much since the beginning. How did you get involved in all of this? Yes, uh, personally, I just, I just know our Bill, our founder, from well years ago. Okay. And somewhere, I feel I know he's you know planning on something like this. And you know, I'm a gadget guy. I carry three phones. Of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> And um, you know, I'm wearing. I hope I can wear two, maybe two wearables on each of my uh, wrist. So I just really love you know gadgets overall. So um, and you know, Royal is a very unique place also for me personally. Mm -hmm. You know that being able to work on you know the the process technology, or working on circuit, which is my major, is my expertise, and all the way grows into an end product. Uh, I think. That kind of exposure is is very very unique and very very challenging at the same time, but uh, it's a very please, pleasing feeling, you know. As for now, to see Absolutely. these devices out on the market. <laughs> Why do you think some of the bigger brands like LG and Samsung, who played around with flexible screens, haven't been able to get a device to where your device is today? So, um, you know, for bigger company, uh, their decision making process is. Very complicated. Right. You know, there, are, there. Are, you have to see whether it's a profitable market. You know, when they're selling, you know, hundreds of millions of the normal device, 
why they have to invent a new device that compete with their own space, right? But for us, that, that's our job. That as a startup company, Royal, I still I still see ourselves as a startup company. So that's the job of a startup company to disrupt the market, to really show the market that actually such technology is already is already there, right. and it's a matter of determination and you know uh, and together with the market, there there will be a process you know educating the market and involved with the market. But uh, you know, we want to be on the front end, and as a as a startup company, we have nothing to lose. <laughs> so True. That, that that's our role.